Welcome in to game number two of the Platinum Ace match between Team Composite and the Killer Pikachus. Spawning up in the upper right hand corner of the screen in the red color playing for Team Composite. He leads one to zero. With a win he would secure victory for Team Composite. It is Wisco. And spawning across from him in the lower left in the yellow color playing for the team the Killer Pikachus. He needs a win to keep his team alive. It is Zifreak. Zifreak is team captain for the Killer Pikachus. Uh, worth noting. It's, he's a fantastic guy. That's all I really have to say about that. Um, game number one, we saw uh, Wisco do... I believe he's trademarked it at this point, but it's his uh, Void Ray Mindfuck build. And it worked to great effect. 31 SCVs killed, able to eventually overpower his opponent's army. And... We'll see if he does something similar in game number two, or if his opponent's wise to that and defend uh, a little bit more against it. Um, or let's just see what transpires in game number two. Uh, this is a best of three series uh, between these two players, as I've said before. So if Zafreek's able to win, we'll have a game number three. If Wisco's able to win, then Team Composite takes the 4-3 to three win for the week. This is the last cast of week number four. Uh, week number five replays are up, so uh, maybe tomorrow night, maybe Sunday night, we will have uh, Evolution versus Anarchy. And I still didn't look up the other game that I'm going to cast next week. But uh, that's going to be the first one, Evolution versus Anarchy. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, those are two pretty good teams. And I keep clicking on the Destructible Rocks when I do that. Let's go again, sending out that early scout, and he's not going to be rewarded with any scout information. Um, this is a freak doing a good job, just kind of hiding what he's doing. It looks like he wants to go uh, for that one Rax fast expand without any gas. Very standard stuff from our Terran player. Wisco, meanwhile, still hasn't thrown down that second gas. So this isn't going to be the same build as it was last game. Uh, but Cybernetics Core on the way, and everything looking very standard in the land of Protoss and the land of Terran. And I'd be interested to see a more macro game between these two players. I did check between games. I believe Z-Freak is Diamond, uh, just to confirm that. So both players were promoted after the season started, um, which sadly means that we have to say goodbye to them after the season's over, uh, which I guess is the most sad thing. But the SCV from Z-Freak, going to see everything going on in the main base of Wisco, uh, and... Seeing that there's no second gas, he's not going to be alarmed that there's more Void Rays coming for his face. Um, second Command Center on the way from Z-Freak, down on the low ground, and everything transpires as it should. Barracks number two and three being added on, we'll be able to get up those Marines and those Marauders. And Wisco finally able to uh, kill off that Scout SCV from his opponent as he heads across the map, taking a little bit of center control, and he likes to put on a little bit of pressure with his first Marine and, uh, or with his first Zealot and Stalker. And this can do damage, especially if the bunker's not done, like it isn't. So we'll see if any damage can get done. Uh, if not, you can always just trade shields for a couple of hit points, and it's not that big of a deal. Wisco has a second Stalker headed across, and this is kind of an early rush. He's not going to get there before the bunker finishes, but he can uh, actually trade decently against it uh, with this handful of units. But they're seeing that he is going to back off, so nothing drastic coming out of our Protoss player in game number two. Instead, throwing down that Nexus and starting to play a more macro game, adding on gateways number two and three as well, and basically these are, these are paired builds from our two races. Twilight Council very quickly from Wisco, and that's an interesting choice. Um, Twilight Council doesn't tend to be the best tech on this map. Um, there's not a lot of surface area to utilize Blink. Uh, charge is okay uh, in the middle of the map, but again, into your opponent's base, it can be a little bit risky. Second and third bunker coming down from Z Freak. He's really expecting uh, some pressure headed on, and if we look at his scouting information, it's fairly incomplete. So we'll see, maybe this could be for Dark Templar from Wisco. Uh, that would be an interesting choice. But I'm curious to see where this build goes. Um, really for both players. 
gate leads two and three to finish up. Uh, Wolf gate is finished, so those can turn over. Um, and right now, Wisco just keeping some map control, making sure his opponent's not moving out, doing any sort of early shenanigans. And Zafreet just loading up his three bunkers on the low ground. Uh, and we see, actually, this is going to be the earliest uh, Templar archives from Wisco. So there's nothing actually to tank damage for these Templar that are going to be coming out, but he will have perhaps the earliest storm in existence. Um, and that can be very tough to deal with, uh, especially in these lower leagues like we're seeing. Factory on the way from Z Freak, uh, and soon he'll be tacked up to those medevacs and he'll be able to start putting on some pressure of his own. Getting Stim first, again, indicates that he wants to th uh, throw his first two medevacs right into the fire and do some early drops. Adding on a third gas as well, uh, just to continue this production, we'll probably see a couple of engineering bays. Uh, there's already one done, there might be another one on the way as well. And all that sort of good stuff. Wisco, meanwhile, trying to play as safe as he can while teching as heavily. Uh, there are really three things that you can be doing. You can be focusing on units, you can be focusing on economy, you can be focusing on tech. Wisco really favoring tech and uh, economy, and just doesn't have the units quite yet to engage in a head-to-head -head fight, and that should be indicated in the army supply, uh, which is, yeah, 25 to 18 in favor of Zifreak. But Wisco checking around, making sure there's no third base. This is really good scouting by him. Uh, we did see the scan come down uh, from Zifreak, so he's got a little bit better idea of what his opponent's doing, and was able to see the Templar. And we'll see that does immediately force the Ghost Academy to be built uh, by Z-Freak. It's back here. There's the Ghost Academy. Ghost Academy actually doesn't take very long to build. It's kind of interesting to note, uh, but it does require barracks. Uh, I'm only saying that just in lieu of an engineering bay block, which is actually the uh, most hit points and fastest building structure from Terran, uh, at least in the early game. That's why you don't see a supply depot usually up to that block. Um, a Ghost Academy, I guess, could be used, but you do have to use gas to do that, so maybe not. But it does build really quick. Anyway, Combat Shield and Concussive Shell being added on, and this could be a nice timing for Z-Freak to move out. Uh, when these two upgrades are done, he'll have probably four medevacs, and that can be pretty devastating to a player that won't have any Colossus. He'll have a huge Templar count. There's six of them. I believe that'll be... Yeah, he's got more Templar than he does Stalkers right now. Uh, but he's adding on another er, robotics facility, adding on that third base as well. Uh, the Scout Factory going to get in from Zerik and be able to spot everything. And both players really doing a good job with their scouting so far. They're spotted immediately. Wisco, meanwhile, <laughs> sends his Stalker around. He'll spot the third base of his opponent and probably to be able to delay it is there's, you know, that one SCV building it. But right now, both players content to sit back in macro, and we'll see when these aggressive timings unlock. Combat shield now done, uh, and there we go. That's, I believe, the QE was waiting for. Uh, this plus one armor, of course, just started, so he's not going to have that, but he's got all of his infantry upgrades. He may be able to take out the stalker now, uh, and that's a nice little grab for the Terran player. <coughs> Excuse me. As he moves across the map, it uh, looks like the target of this attack is going to be the third base, and Wisco will need to head down there to defend. He's got eight Templar, and all with enough energy to storm. He's splitting off a couple of these Templar just to make sure there's no drop back into his main behind this, uh, especially after seeing the two medevacs. You can split up your army in that way and make a nice two-pronged attack. Wisco does spot this army with the Stalker out here. Going to lose another one, though, for free. And headed into the third base area, there's the Stim up from Zafreek, taking down another pylon, and actually canceling that warp in. Two storms going down, though, the third one catching a lot of these units, and that just devastates the army of Zafreek. A lot of them still alive, but just on the last legs as they retreat back across the map. Wisco in hot pursuit. So many Templars still. There's six of them with two more in the main. Wisco, unfortunately, supply blocked at 102, uh, so having a little bit of trouble with the reinforcement and the counterattack, and these units should get healed up and not really any damage done. If we look, units lost now, slightly in favor of our Protoss player. 
But third base done for both of them, beginning to be saturated. Actually, the third base is not done for Z Freak, as he hasn't continued rebuilding that after the Stalker shot it. Now the unit's headed across the map for Wisco, looking for a little bit of an opportunity to engage on this bio. He still has so many storms stocked up. Uh, it looks like he'll have four, maybe five available to him if he wants. He's headed to the third base. Oh, his Templar are going to get caught, though. He needs to storm and... Oh, no. That's a huge catch for Z Freak, and really costly now. Wisco is going to have this army cleaned up. It's not going to be able to do too much without any AoE damage. Uh... The medevacs are running out of energy, so doing a little bit more damage than they probably should. But Wisco's army just cleaned up by Z Freak, and uh, more and more production being added on now. There's five more barracks being added on at the front. You see the resources getting a little bit high for both players after these micro situations. But Wisco just getting his Templar caught. Those were the real strength of his army, and the ability to storm was uh, really the only deterrent uh, from Z Freak just coming and rolling it, uh, rolling on in. But now Z Freak headed toward the third base area. There's not much to defend for Wisco, and a lot of these probes going to go down, um, as well as the base. There's the stim up. Uh, again, the energy from the medevacs is really low, so a lot of this damage is permanent. If there were splash damage available to Wisco, uh, he might have a definite opportunity to kill uh, a good portion of this army, if not all of it. All the probes going down, though, 17, 18 now killed. And that's a really important grab for him. It looks like this probe's going to suicide as well as a couple more. So 24 workers killed now and ready to engage. A nice storm coming down. A lot of them on top of each other, not doing the maximum damage, but it is going to force the freak back. Uh, more feedbacks coming down on the medevacs as he was trying to pick up and run away, but that's not going to happen. And now Wisco able to hold with those nice storms on top of his opponent's army. There's the big reinforcement warp in, and now we're basically even in supply. 115 to 107. More bio units just trailing across the map, though, to the watchtower. And this is just a huge amount of production. Ten barracks right now. All of them have add-ons of one variety or another. Uh, the starport actually not being used. And that's really what's been costing the Freak is not having uh, that medevac energy in these fights. So a lot of his bio units are hurt and unable to regain their health. But now Wisco looking to get a little bit uh, aggressive. Neither player's really been able to do that uh, damage, but now Z-Freak doing a drop back in his opponent's main base. That's doing a lot of damage again. All these probes going down in the main. With a counterattack for Wisco, kind of a base trade situation here. Uh, <coughs> it looks like this might get cleaned up. There's not enough energy to storm from these two Templar, unfortunately. Third base goes down, though, for uh, Z-Freak. And... The engagement here, not the best, but Z-Freak just doesn't have any medevacs with this army. Stimming, stutter-stepping, storms need to happen now from Wisco. EMP comes off, uh, hits a couple of those Templar, it looked like, uh, but there's no storm. The one Colossus still left alive. He was able to finally clean up the damage in his main, but now Wisco trails so much. Uh, if he'd been able just to throw out a storm, a casual storm or two, there's no medevacs to heal the damage. And a lot of these units fall, and this looks, again, pretty even. But now 46 workers killed to 11. Wisco in a pretty horrible spot, down 119 supply to 45. As a freak gathering up his army at the watchtower. Again, not adding on any more medevacs. Uh, just, that's the only thing that's really kept him from powering through in this game, I have to say. But now the small army of Z-Freak headed out toward the third base. Uh, there's not a whole lot of army left for Wisco. Four Stalkers and a Colossus. He's really had to focus on rebuilding uh, his economy rather than rebuilding his uh, army. He rebuilding the Templar archives as well. This army going to go basically unengaged upon. Uh, the Stalkers and the Colossus coming in here. That actually might not be able to kill Z Freak. He's going to finally engage. He stims up, trying to take down that Colossus. Concussive Shell slowing it down. He does take down the Colossus, uh, but the Stalkers will be able to clean that up, at least for the time being. Wisco still trails by 70 supply, and now Z Freak moving a couple more units into position. I'm not sure where these Marauders are going. There they go. He's just gathering them up in different groups. But again, there's just no army really left for Wisco. That Colossus able to hold off. 
uh, at least for a little bit. There's one more available to him now, warping in a couple of Templar as well. But in comes the army of Z-Freak. Again, no Medivacs, which is, may come into play again. But these Stalkers going to go down. There's the Stim in. Stalkers go down. Now the third base under fire. And this doesn't look too good for the Protoss player. Z-Freak now headed in, picking off more and more probes. We look now, 67 SCVs to 42 probes. 41 now as that one dies. If we look, 49 workers have been killed during this game. A couple of these probes look like they might be headed back toward that third area, but nicely caught there. More bio units streaming in from Z-Freak from every angle, and he's looking to push up. There's two Templars, uh, both with enough energy to storm one Colossus as well. There's a nice storm on top of those uh, Marines, but he will pick off both Templar. The other one goes down as well. Colossus falls, and that's going to be it for Wisco as the army moves into the main. Taking it down, GG from Wisco. And Zafreek has taken game number two for Killer Pikachus, and we'll head into uh, the ace match of the ace match, I guess. Both players tied one to one in this best of three set, and the game's still up in the air. So one final game left to decide the week for Composite and for Killer Pikachus. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with uh, game number three of the ace match between Wisco and Zafreek. Oops. There, that's the one I wanted. And you can do this, oh baby. If you try, all that I want from you, my son, is to be satisfied. 